Welcome to episode 401 of We Don't Die. I'm your host, Sandra Champlain, author of the international best-selling book called We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death. And just a reminder, our home base is wedontdie.com, where you can always find past episodes. You can join our free Sunday gathering with medium demonstration included. We host weekly classes and you can download all past episodes commercial free. And if you are listening to this on your favorite podcast channel, and you'd rather see my beautiful guest, well, then head over to YouTube, type in We Don't Die 401. We have a special guest today. Her name is Teresa Chung. She is the best-selling author of many, many books and oracle cards, and is an expert in the fields of dreams, spirituality, intuition, and the science of consciousness, just our kind of person. Some of her titles include the Dream Dictionary from A to Z, the Encyclopedia of Birthdays, and her latest, Empower Your Inner Psychic. She is the host of the White Shores podcast, sharing inspiration on personal growth and how to create the infinite life of your dreams. And Teresa is extra special to me as she and I share the same birthday, April 8th. You can find out more about her and all that she's up to on her website, which is TeresaChung.com. Teresa, welcome to We Don't Die Radio. Welcome. Thank you, Sandra. And who is this lady you introduced? I want to meet her. (laughs) She sounds pretty great, doesn't she? (laughs) It's always wonderful to hear that. Thank you so much. I feel blessed by that introduction. Thank you. I will try to be worthy of it. Oh, well, we are never who our little inner voice says that we are because, you know, we downplay what we do. But you've done a lot. You've given a lot. You continue to. You have had me on your podcast a couple of times, and I'm just... I'm so grateful. So I thought it's time to turn the camera on you because I know we share a lot of common beliefs. I know you've got some stories to tell about why you believe in the afterlife. And I just want to see who you are, what you're up to and share it with as many people as possible. Thank you. And I'm 401. I love that. Wow, you are prolific as I would expect from an April the 8th birthday. (laughs) That's wonderful. I feel like I'm number 401. This is fantastic. What a what a fantastic number to be and um truly blessed to 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 be here today. Really I am. I've heard a lot about you. I've been connected to you by people I love and admire. And again, it's high time that we saw each other face to face because this is the first time we have. We've done audio. Right. Yeah, so if if you're listening and you want to see <laughs> to April the 8th <laughs> twins meeting please do tune into uh, Sandra's YouTube (laughs) we do share fun personality passion and clearly a big smile so yes I mean yeah yeah and also Buddha's birthday isn't it April the 8th a lot to live up to we have so talk about you how did you get involved in all that you're up to tell us a little bit about your past maybe where you're talking to us from today Yeah, let's just get to know you. Thank you. I'm talking to you from Windsor, United Kingdom, where I've lived for the last 25 or so years. I did live for a few years in America, actually, Dallas. Um, But before that, I was uh, British through and through. Um, I was born into a family of traveling spiritualists um, and dream decoding, seances, um, following your intuition, consulting astrology charts was in my blood. I mean, that's what I was brought up in you know, brought up with, Um, I was home educated, and I somehow managed to um, uh, deserve a place at King's College, Cambridge University, where I read theology and English. And that was seminal for me, because suddenly all my beliefs that I'd grown up with were challenged in a way that only academics can, um, because you can't go into that environment and say, I believe in an afterlife and dreams mean something without backing it up with solid academic credentials and research. So really, it was a seminal moment for me going to that academic hothouse um, and a blessing too, because not not only did it force me to look for proof backing to get, you know, uh, to, to, to provide more than just I believe, but to look for the proof, it also gave me the opportunity when I left 
to write book after book after book after book after book in <laughs> this area. I have been going strong since the late uh, 1990s um, and continue to do so to this year. And um, I, yes, I have a new book coming out this year. I've had two books coming out this year and I have two more coming out next year. I feel truly blessed, but I, I feel that I am responding to the current interest that is in spiritual growth and awakening and what happens after we die. And that's what I specialize in. Um, but I am quite unusual in that I don't claim to be able to talk to dead people myself. Um, I do in my way, but not in the way a lot of people would think, you know, um, I don't claim to be psychic. Again, I am in my way, I'm in intuitive and I have vivid dreams, but I have a passionate belief in all these things and a thirst and a hunger, really, I guess, to understand my upbringing. You could, you know, I was surrounded by people I loved and trusted who would go into trances, who would, you know, operate in this way. And then I, my belief was challenged at Cambridge by skeptics, the rational community of academics. Um, and then, I, I mean, really, my books chart my journey, as, as yours do, which is, again, the April 8th similar from skeptic to believer to missionary in a way for what we talk about, we are evangelical now. That's how I feel I am. Um, but in, in a very positive sense, and that I very much channel in my work, the direct communication. I'm very against following gurus or, or people like that. You know, I don't believe we should follow or copy. I believe in true Aries style that we should forge our own path. Um, I'm, I'm rambling, that. aren't I? As no, I tend to do in my podcast, I get messages from my podcast. You know, Teresa, if you could just just talk a little less. <laughs> well, there's one thing about my show is people appreciate when I don't interrupt when the guests can talk more. So we love You're to pretty. hear stories. We truly, truly do. And I want to get into much of the things that you talk about um, and in time, you know, obviously your, your latest work, talk about dreams. But could you talk about the life after death? That's the thing that yes. brings most people to this podcast because at one point or another we're all, all going to have loved ones who will pass uh physically pass and it is brutal and so it's brutal we'd love yeah. to hear stories of why our guests believe absolutely as i said i was brought up in a community of people who had staunch belief in that you know from the age of four i was going to mediumship demonstrations and seeing people allegedly connect to the afterlife. And when I was young, my memory was seeing people come into a service, lost crying and leaving, standing taller. And that really impacted me. What was going on? I didn't understand it as you can't as a child, but something powerful was happening there. And then later in my life, as I said, I researched this, worked with scientists, looked at mediumship, looked at beliefs in life after death, but I didn't have direct personal experience until I would guess my late 20s, early 30s. This is when it really started to happen because I had personal tragedy myself. I lost my mother, who I was incredibly close to, and I was convinced that she would just pop up and appear because she believed in this and she promised me she would. Nothing I sensed nothing in the early days and it sent me in a real downward spiral of I've been deceived all my life. This isn't real. And it was extremely, I mean, I get teary thinking about it. It was like I wanted to connect with her in some way. And I went to mediums, I went to psychics, nothing came, came through that really moved and stirred me until something came through myself. I had a dream about her I did actually she did figure in my dreams and I now know that that was the way she was trying to reach me that's a very gentle afterlife sign to not unsettle us but at the time I did that wasn't enough you know I was I wanted like the full-blown vision um so naive I was um but I had a dream of her telling me to take the right path um it was a very vivid dreams lots of detail as dreams have and when I woke up it was like she had been there and I felt very, very calm. I remember that morning. And But I dismissed the dream as we often dismiss our dreams thinking, she used to tell me that in life. She used to say whenever I was uh, distressed, take the right path, follow, follow your heart basically. But then it, it manifested into concrete reality when that very day I was heading to my very first radio interview. 
um, I was very nervous because I was already collecting stories of people who believed in angels, who believed in afterlife, and I was publishing features about them. And it picked up the interest of a, a local station and they wanted to interview me. Now this was in the days before mobile and everything, long time ago, and I was so excited I was going there. And the way to the radio station was to turn left when I hit at a junction, when I came to a junction. And I was just about to turn left and then the dream came into my mind and I still to this day cannot explain this. Trust me, I have second guessed it and I've doubted it. Take the right path. It was almost like I heard her voice outside my head and inside my head at the same time. Never had this before. And as often happens when you get a powerful moment like that, you just obey. You don't know why, you just know. So I turned right thinking, well, I can make up time going the long way round. Of course, I missed my interview. They wouldn't reschedule, I begged and pleaded. And I was fuming, I was absolutely fuming, but it was only later I discovered that taking that left pass, there was a massive pileup involving a truck and several cars. And I had been trailing that truck at one point because I recognized it. I don't know whether I would have been involved in that. I don't know, I can't prove it. But a part of me feels that I could have done because there's no other reason why I was suddenly urged to take the wrong direction away from where I was supposed to be heading. And that has been a major turning point. And then since then have been more vivid afterlife dreams, more coincidences, shapes in clouds, and just this feeling of her being alive within me and talking to me through my dreams, through my intuitions. And then the journey of my life, again, which I chart in my books, is understanding that you don't need a blinding vision of re revelation, you know, as people think. It happens in that gentle, subtle way within your state of mind. And that every time I hear her voice or dream about her, she's alive in some sense. And I connect to that and it gives me tremendous strength um, so I can think of her now with a smile before a tear. And that's where you want to get with the grief journey because the grief journey is harrowing. And you want to get to that place when you can enter into this new relationship in spirit. Beautiful. Yes. And it is empowering. And in a way, you know, you know, my mother and other people I've loved and lost, in a way it's kind of liberating because they're with me all the time. You carry them with you forever. And uh, so again, I chart that in my my books, um, my many books, um, you know, afterlife dreams. There's a lot of research into the power of afterlife dreams at university level, showing that in over 90% of cases, people who have afterlife dreams, dream of their departed loved ones, do deal better with the grief process, um, as, as you would know. And that 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 is heavenly in itself, that it can help. It really can help you heal and grow stronger. Um, so, it, so really, that that's my big afterlife journey, um, and it continues. It's ongoing, you know, on a daily basis. It's it's connecting to those I've loved and lost in spirit, and that includes animals, because animals are so important to me, and feeling them around me. I, I recently lost one of my cats to a road accident. It broke my heart, and then would wake up in the night with a vivid dream of that cat just running free and happy and talking to me actually and just knowing that somewhere at some point we 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 will be connected again That's it's beautiful. it's just knowing isn't it and but it is it, it takes a process to get to that knowing i don't I, some of us are born with it some people come to it much easier but for me i think i had to go through this journey of doubt I, and again, I, I sense that that's, that's where you've been from your skeptics position. I think I was thrust into a place like Cambridge to really explore that doubt and then come out the other side, but also to use my personal journey, my, my credentials in academia to in a way present this message in a way that's palatable to the mainstream media. Because I do get invited a lot onto mainstream media channels now it's only been recently the last five years especially since the lockdowns because of dream decoding but i'm able to sort of bring this message in a way now that i know how i can express these these concepts that we talk about 
all the time in our community in a way that isn't going to really unsettle them, but will hopefully open the door. That's all I want when I do an interview, you know, on, 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 a, on a mainstream TV show or, or, or radio station is to open the door. And I have found, long story short, that dreams are that door for me. Personally, we're all different. We have different doors, but for me, it has been vivid dreaming and exploring that the world of the dream. Um, that has been, because my biggest selling book is my dream dictionary A to Z. It's, it's, it's all over the world. And of course, my afterlife experience was through a vivid dream. And so I feel that dream decoding and helping people understand that when they tune into the world of the dreams, they are tuning into spirit or a part of themselves that's invisible and unseen and infinitely wise. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about that, because out of all these episodes, 401, I've never had someone just talking about dreams. I know for myself, dreams are part of evidence. I mean, there's, you know, people can yes. smell of grandma's cologne or sometimes lights flash off and on yes. and, you know, all kinds of things happen. But the dream world is a subtle world. It's a world where people often brush off to just their imagination. And my belief is there's certainly dream visitations, but I also know that we've got a curious subconscious and it's almost like a bilge pump. Sometimes dreams yeah. can just be wild and crazy. So just dreaming about your loved one, you know, there's different kinds of dreams. And I would love it if you would talk and like really explore this because of course I, I will. people want to have their loved ones show up in dreams. They want to know it is them. And, you know, and th there can be some dreams that our loved ones do things that are not so nice. And, you know, to me, I chalk that up to sometimes our subconscious, but if, if you could just talk a little bit about expand on this dreams and what can we, can we do something to have more of them? <laughs> Well, I feel so blessed actually to come in and, and talk about dreams. Thank you. And of course, episode 401, the number five, all of that change and, 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 and sort of like throwing things up in the air. Thank you. Um, and dreams, I think, are the way you can start talking to people about the concept of an afterlife, people who have abandoned that idea and don't believe it. Because if you ask them, where do you go when you dream? It encourages a wonderful wonderful debate and people who say well I have no signs and I say have you dreamt of them and then you know you can talk about certain cultures where dreams are believed to be the portal the entry point between this life and the next we go into this realm you know and you could say in a way that near-death experiences also are kind of like going to that dream state but to know if you've had an afterlife dream there are some criteria I'll run through from the research I I've done afterlife dreams differ from the great majority of dreams, which are highly symbolic, like fragments. Afterlife dreams, I call them night visions, and that they feel incredibly realistic. They typically have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Whereas symbolic dreams, the great majority of dreams, which are just as valuable because you're exploring your unconscious world, who you really are from the inside out in symbolic way for you to decode. They are truly valuable for personal growth and development. But these night visions, as I call them, they have a beginning and a middle and an end, unlike symbolic dreams, where it's literally like you literally in a dream, you plunge right in the middle of a story. You know, if you are in what's one way of knowing you're dreaming when you're dreaming and if you want to become lucid, that knowing when you're dreaming and you're dreaming is like, how did this scenario begin? And you have no memory of it because you're in a dream. Dreams are chaotic and then it will switch to another fragment and another fragment. But after night dreams, from all the research that's been done, and I have collated thousands of afterlife dream stories in my time. Also, you know, um, spoken and worked with the Windbridge Institute, um, Mark Bocosi and, and Dr. Judy Baisha, who study afterlife dreams, um, and many other dream experts, is that the, the, the hallmark of an afterlife dream is it feels so real. There's a beginning and a middle and end, for example, and is also typically in a realistic setting. And the loved one will typically enter in a very mundane way. But you will know it's them because they will just talk about, you know, they'll make a cup of tea or they'll do something very casual. My first dream of my mum when she had, my mother, had, when she had departed, was she simply went into my room and was tidying up things on my chair. You know, it, and it was so sort of like gentle. But that's a hallmark of a, of a afterlife dream. And if you've had those, treasure them. They are a gentle and subtle way for the other side to reach out and not cause alarm. 
because I do firmly believe that spirit wants to reach out to us, but they are concerned about whether we can cope with that contact sometimes. It's alarming and it's unsettling. And also we might get addicted to it and want more and more and more. And we can't have that. We are on this earth still because for a very important reason, there's things for us to learn and do. And spirit doesn't want to interfere with that, but dreams are a wonderful way for them to just check in now and again and say hi in a way that they know will comfort but not trigger angst or concern or panic or fear so um that that is the hallmark of an afterlife dream and you can kind of incubate these kind of dreams as well you can go to sleep at night and ask for a dream of a departed loved one um, but i don't want people get disappointed if it doesn't happen it doesn't happen for a reason right there are other ways you can connect with your loved ones through nature through music through memory the power of memory and daydreaming is so much for connecting to to the, to the other side we, we forget that all about the time. That? yes daydreaming is just another way to dream it really is it's just another dream state <laughs> would you talk a little bit more about that because i think that may be a new concept a lot of people um well what i say it a lot is that we can initiate conversation with our loved yes. ones. We can think about past memories. We can feel what it was like to be with them and whether we're dancing or laughing and just kind of ignite that. But then it's so easy to just brush it off as our imagination. Well, yes, but imagination is more important than knowledge, to quote Einstein. You know, logic will take you from A to B. Imagination will take you everywhere. The whole world has started with imagination. Imagination is the most powerful, powerful tool. Please don't neglect it. Um, we do live in a world now which, where the balance has tilted towards logic and reason, ration, the, what is rational, what is material, what can be proved. But just as there is night and there is day, we are a mixture of the rational, the reasonable and the logical and also the intuitive, the invisible, the creative. And all, in my humble opinion, all cause of, of distress and depression is when the balance tilts too much one way. I mean, you can go the other way in this field. I'm sure you've had that, where you get so obsessed with it that you lose touch with reality and you're not earning any money. You're not, you're not got your feet on the ground. That's just as damaging as people who are overly materialistic and get all their definition from the outside in. What well, I think the challenge of our lives and the way to find inner peace is to get balance and paying attention to your dreams is the, a really simple way to get balance because it reminds you that you are more than your body. We go somewhere in our sleep that is, even scientists don't quite understand why we dream or where we go. It is not random firings of the brain. Research has shown that if deprived of the dreaming stage of sleep, it leads to increased depression and anxiety and stress. We need to dream for our well-being. We truly do. Dreams are mighty important for brain health. If you want an alert brain, good memory, to feel good, you need to dream, right? And it really helps also to recall your dreams. Now, if you're listening and you don't recall your dreams, please don't panic. It doesn't mean to say you're not dreaming, you do. We dream every single night, at least five or six times, but we've got into the habit of not recalling it. And the reason we've got into habit of not recalling it is probably to do with our upbringing, what we were taught at school, that dreams were meaningless. Maybe our daily lives have got too heavily weighted towards the material right less contact with what is invisible and unseen so if you are struggling with dream recall there's some tips to trigger it spend more time in nature with living things listen to music read fiction to to reactivate that part of your brain that may be not not firing with the recall you can trigger dream recall and i would urge everyone to do that because it's good for brain health it really is good for brain health it's also good for inner peace because it reminds you that you are a mysterious being, right? You are a spiritual being having a human experience. And in the dream state, you go to the, the portal, the entry point of spiritual connection. Um, and this is what, you know, my, my mission, my main message is in all my books. If you want to be psychic, if you want to be a medium, if you want to have connection with the other side, first step, dream recall. 
because that will help you understand how the unconscious speaks to you. The unconscious often speaks to you in a very symbolic metaphorical language. And it's learning that, learning that language, recalling your dreams, writing them down, reminds you that there's a part of you that observes your life that is separate from your body, from your thoughts and your feelings even, that kind of steps outside that and sees the bigger picture at night. Because if you do keep a dream journal, as I have done from the day dot, really, from child I have, it's absolutely fascinating reading because it's like there's this poetic voiceover brainstorming and commenting on and predicting your life. And all you need to do is to go back in your dream dictionary and read it and see that your inner wisdom was talking to you. Spirit was talking to you. You just weren't understanding what it was saying. So <laughs> again, a long answer. I get carried away. <laughs> it's good. It's all good. I want to just ask you something personal. And I think other people can apply it. My mom and I owned a big catering business for about 35 years and we traveled with race car teams. That was our, our income. It closed because of COVID, but we would work literally 16, 18 hours a day, feeding up to 1500 people a meal. So it was big, 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 big. Yeah. So here we are over three years later and the dreams still keep happening. And they're all dreams where we can never get food out in time. We aren't set up yet and people are waiting with their plate in their hand. They're so unsettling. It feels like we have PTSD. They've been going <laughs> on for years and it's, you know, I always thought like, hopefully eventually they'll die down. Is it something where if I pay attention to it, if I write it down, if I start inquiring into it, that maybe there's a way we can dial down those dreams that cause us stress and maybe dial up those dreams that I'd love to see my grandmother again, if she's willing, or my grand or my dad or grandfather, or you know, people that are close to me. Your dreaming mind takes you back to that state because that time in your life was huge. You, you, you know, I mean, you've made a difference all your life, but this was like on a really practical, I mean, and I, I, I salute you. What an incredible initiative your dreaming mind is taking you back to the symbolism not necessary to that but to the symbolism of it of making this big impact and true and i i can sense that with you already knowing and you're on april the 8th of course you want to do more than just offer words you want to give real practical help and that's why your dreaming mind is taking you back to that in a kind of cathartic way saying this is where your power is Sandra, right? This is where your power, so don't dread these dreams, write them down and start brainstorming, free associating around them. And I'm telling you, once you start doing that and asking your dreaming mind to say, well, what can I do? Your dreaming mind will evolve. The reason it's not evolving is probably because you wake up and you dismiss it and you get angry about it. So your dreaming mind, it's like a, you know, a dog with a bone, it won't give up. It's your best friend, your dreaming mind. It loves you so much. It will use tough love. It will come back again and again. And that's why many people have recurring dreams. And I'll tell you why, because you haven't got the message of the dream. If you keep having similar kind of dreams, it's something you're not getting the message. There's something in your waking life that you need to course correct to achieve what you want to achieve. And that's what this dream is saying. So anyone listening, if you have the repetitive dreams, you really need to look at the symbolism there and then find out what it is in your waking life. Maybe it's just a mindset change or it's a practical change. There will be something that your dreaming mind wants you to shift, make a shift. And when you make that shift, you won't have that kind of dream again. You'll have different kind of dreams. It will evolve. That's how the dreaming mind works. And when you start working with it, it's almost like you're having a conversation with your own inner shaman, your own inner therapist, your own inner light. And it's a truly wonderful, wonderful dialogue to open up within yourself because you're pulling, your dream mind is pulling yourself forward. It's the part of you, the spark, the part of you that I believe goes on after bodily death. Yeah, our dreams are fantastic. I remember talking to someone who had had a near-death experience yes. and he related where he went that was so real that it made his earth life seem like just a dream. And for us, human beings who are so magnificent. I mean, when you think about us, we live in this 
vehicle that all you need to do is a little sunshine, a little food and water, and you know, we can live many, many, many years and all the cells and organs and everything just take care of us. So it's like the dreams serve a purpose. Yes. And we would love to understand them. I mean, they're, they can be wild, but it, if people don't think there's an afterlife, you know, I, I question, well, talk to me about dreams. You know, what are they, you know? What are they? Science doesn't know. No Science. idea. But what's wonderful within, because I do work with scientists and, and neuroscientists researching is that, is that increasingly there's a lot of excitement about the dreaming mind. And this happened actually during the lockdown because we had the lockdown dream phenomenon. Everybody, a lot of people were on furlough at home. They had lies lie in. So they were able without alarm clocks, because alarm clocks are the enemy of dream recall. They shock you into reality far too quickly and your dreaming mind can't compete there's too much noise, there's too much business, too much stress, too much reason, too much to-dos. But during lockdown, a lot of people weren't having that. And so what was happening, there was a surge, and this is unprecedented in the dream community, because um, we had it after 9-11, there were a lot of dreams of people dreaming about towers and collapsing and planes. But this was the first time because the online world had developed so much that people were posting online, I, have you had, I've had the weirdest dream. And it was, a first, it was an unprecedented global dream event that has never been seen before. And it created huge excitement. What was going on? And of course me, I've written about this for ages. I knew exactly what was going on. It was a dreaming mind doing what it has longed to do. First of all, it longs to be noticed. We've ignored it for so long. So it was seizing the moment and also doing what it is meant to do, which is to help heal comfort and evolve. Now you may say, well, why do I get nightmares and anxiety dreams? Well, I'm telling you 90% of our dreams tend to be quite anx anx anxiety ones. They're not easy. And there's a reason for that. As many of us go through our waking life, denying or repressing the shadow part of our personality. And we do all have that again to reference night and day. The shadow side is something that we need to face and encounter. There is in, you know, in, in personal growth at the moment, there's this move, this toxic positivity when you've always got to be bright and bubbly, you know, like that's the way you have to be. No, because you first of all need to understand why you have negative impulses. Why do you feel envious? Why do you feel angry? Why do you feel less than? Why do you feel hateful sometimes? We all have these impulses. Now, what the dreaming mind does is it lets you meet these impulses in the symbolic world of the dream. Like you might meet vampires or you might be a murderer in your dream or, you know, or, or a burglar or something like that. Or you may be attacked or a loved one may die. It, it may, lets you meet your darkest fears and the parts of you that you are unwilling to meet in your waking life. And what it does then, it wants you to understand and enter a dialogue because all the shadow part of the overwhelming majority of us wants is to be noticed acknowledged and understood and when you start dialoguing and we i do encourage that in, in dream work when you've had a particularly disturbing night vision or encounter that you kind of like bring that back in a daydream and dialogue with it have the dream entity or whatever it is sitting aside in your in your imagination of course and say well what do you want to tell me talk to it and so often the fear just dwindles but also taking you to the worst case scenario like loved ones dying you know you know if parents often dream about that their children dying whatever taking you to the worst case scenario for a reason so that you've been there you've had that scenario and you've woken up the next morning and you have have actually faced the worst. Your dreaming mind is trying to help you. It's also showing you your toxic impulses in the dream state because it wants to remind you that in the waking state, you have choice. To be a really strong person is not to never feel angry or hateful or jealous. To be a really strong person is to know you've got those impulses, but not to act on them. Now, the dreaming mind shows us we have these impulses, but then in the, when you wake up, you can choose not to express or indulge them. But the, the healing work is done on an unconscious level at night. And that's why, again, shadow work is, again, another very, very significant movement within dream work of encountering your shadow in the dream state so that you understand it and then can grow from it. Because actually the greatest growth is in the dark is in the darkness and it's the same within our personality and in our dreams it happens in the dark 
And a lot of us just frightened of that. Don't want to go there. No, no, I'm, I'm a nice person. Yes, we are a nice person, but we're a mixture. All of us are a mixture. It's what you choose, though. You can choose to do the right thing to help yourself and empower others. Or you can choose to do something which diminishes you and diminishes others. It's the cho you, we are our choices, really. Dreams show us that we are our choices. The book that I had mentioned, the A to Z or A to Z, does that provide what different things mean? Like if I dream, I lose my teeth. You know what that symbology yes. is? Yeah, I mean, that's a top 10 dream. There is a dream chart now, would you believe? The 100 top 10 dreams and, and teeth falling out is almost always in the top five. It's such a common dream and it's a concern about appearance. It's concern about aging because, you know, when babies, you lose their teeth. It's, it's, it's you know, they're, moved, they're growing up. So dream, and it's also in this social media age, it's how you look. Teeth are also communication. It's how it's something you need to say or something you've said that you regret. So it's, teeth are all in the animal world are all about communication. So looking at the symbolism. So yes, my A to Z, which, which you know, I'm blessed to, you know, I wrote it in 2004 and it's still being reissued over and over again. And it was recently reissued in Barnes and Noble, which is great, it's in, it's in all Barnes and Noble stores at the moment. What I do there is I do the common and universal symbol for, eat, for, for the most typical dream symbols, be it teeth or cat or dog, things that you're most likely, of course it can't cover everything. I mean, otherwise it would be like a library, the, you know, it would be <laughs> ridiculous. But the most common things and, or, you know, that you can relate to, but it gives the universal and common interpretation. However, I do stress, and my publisher hates me for doing this, but I do stress that the most important dream decoder is not my dictionary, it's the individual. I'll give you an example. If you dream of a dog and you love dogs, that's a symbol of unconditional love and loyalty. If you dream of a dog and you've been attacked by a dog and you dislike dogs or fear them, it's going to be a very different symbol. So always go for your personal association is number one. If nothing triggers from the symbol, then look at the universal and the common um, interpretation and see what it triggers what does it brainstorm you to it can lead you on a fascinating path because you could actually dream of really obscure things you had no idea you knew or names pop up go and research the meaning of that name or that person you dreamt of from history why because if you think of all the millions of things you could dream about why is your dreaming mind honing in on that particular thing because there is a symbolic message encoded in there that you have got to crack it's trying to get you excited about being you as well. You're a great puzzle to be solved. It's wonderful, exciting. And keep, keep decoding night after night. That's another mistake people make. They, they focus on one dream. Dreams work as a series. You've got to tune in for the next thrilling installment. Don't get hung up on one dream. Go on, carry on. And you'll know when you're starting to inter interpret your dreams correctly, when you get eureka moments, you feel energized, you feel empowered to do something positive. If you have a dream interpretation that makes you feel anxious, fearful, or drained, it is the incorrect interpretation. I cannot stress this enough. Dream work empowers. So if you've had a dream and you read something online, I mean, there's some terrible dream, dream things online. Some of them are good, but some of them are just really fear mongering. It's ridiculous. And it makes you feel anxious in it it's not correct keep going till you get the empowering one that's the message I and i want you to get excited that you know sometimes we all feel lonely and lost sometimes and just waking up with a dream on your mind is a reminder there's more for you to do there's more for you to learn there's something going on here you know you've got your own back it's 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 i always i get I actually feel sad now sometimes i i wake up without any dream recall and i'm like <laughs> let me ask you this teresa yes and this i i think i know the answer but if we look at our dreams as our inner therapist if we yes. journal our dreams if we have you know some guides and like your book and books and tap into our own intuition and we're dialoguing with them does that open space up in our dreaming mind for either new ideas to pop in or our loved ones to pop in when we can handle our oh, yes. stuff. The, the thing is with dream work, it's the gift that keeps on giving. The more, it's like anything in life, 
when you put your energy and focus into it, it rewards you, right? The reason dreams haven't been rewarding is because you haven't you haven't necessarily focused on them or given them that that center stage. And it's like, you know, someone who's texted you for years and you've been ignoring them. Sometimes a dreamy mind can think, oh, I'm going to, oh, no point, no point. You know, <laughs> you've got to let your dreaming mind trust you again. You've got to, you've got to reassure your dreaming mind that you are going to listen, that you are going to pay attention. And that can take a couple of weeks. If, you, if you're listening to this and you haven't done dream work for a while or paid attention to your dreams, you know, it's going to take a couple of weeks of you consistently recording your dreams, writing them down. For your dreaming mind to really trust that you mean business and you're not going to dismiss them again and, and, and disappear, right? Your dreaming mind needs to form that bond with you. And I actually urge people to get at least 20 dreams in their diary before they even start the work of interpreting it. Because remember what I said about dreams being working as a series, right? Don't just tune into episode two. You know, you need episode one and, and carry on. So get at least Start your dream to coach. First of all, just enjoy the process of waking up in the morning. Keep still, um, hopefully without an alarm clock. And then when those images come, and they, they will, just, just stay calm. Say, let's see what bubbles to the surface. If nothing bubbles to the surface, there will be an emotion. Now, the language of dreams is emotion. Write down how you feel, because we always feel slightly different on waking. Write it down. Say, well, I, and write in your diary, I, I couldn't recall this morning, but hopefully tomorrow and keep going on like that just the act of doing that will trigger something over time and then wait till you've got about 20 or 30 dreams before you even start the work of dream decoding and you will find that then your dreaming mind will trust you more and more and your dreams will get richer and richer and richer and for people who are listening who are thinking oh this is i'm skeptical einstein i mentioned him earlier about imagination theory of relativity relativity came to him in a vision and dream because in the dream state, you are able to make creative connections between things that you couldn't do in the logical state because reason says no. But in the dream state, the only thing missing is reason. So you are able to make wildly wild connections that when you're conscious and awake, you just wouldn't go there. And I could talk to you forever about some of the world's greatest works of art, literature, music, innovation, science, even technology, Google, vision in a dream from one of the founders. It, it starts in the dream state that someone has woken up with an image or a symbol on their mind, written it down, brainstormed, and it's led to something that literally has pushed humanity forward. Yeah, I know there's you think of relativity, you know? <laughs> yeah, I've, I've heard of Paul McCartney tapping into the dream Yesterday. State. And yes. Yeah, exactly. And uh, Tom Albedo. Turner had yes. some songs and I can imagine so many different works of art. Teresa, tell us about what you're currently up to. I know there's a brand new book and you are a passionate lady and you've done so much. So tell us what's going on today. Well, coming from you, <laughs> look at your body of work. You know, you are an inspiration, Sandra, and thank you for this amazing amazing opportunity to talk to you and, and, and your listeners and, and all the work that you do. You, you, you inspire me and I'm so happy. I feel like I've got a kind of like soul sister over there in the States, you know, cause <laughs> it's lovely. Um, and I'd like to thank Elizabeth Boisson of helping her and parents heal for connecting us. And she's also very close to us in birthdays and she was, she the ninth or the seventh of April. The 7th. Yeah. <laughs> We're the birthday um, uh, crowd. It's it's wonderful, and we're all drawn to spirit and the afterlife and and the mystical. It's yeah, incredible, isn't it? Um, so yes, yeah, sorry, you you asked about my latest book. Sorry, I latest I got book and latest passion. Yeah. Well, I mean, my passion has been always the mystical, dream work, afterlife signs, intuition, all the, how ways to train it and develop it. Um, all aspects really of mind, body and soul I write about, but my current book just out in the States is called Empower Your Inner Psychic. And that is really, again, it starts with a passionate tribute to dreams. There's also a big section, what dreams may come about afterlife, referencing that wonderful Robin Williams film, which is my favorite film of all time. Um, I think it gets the afterlife so, so right. Have you, have you seen it? 
Oh, I've crazy. seen it. And I've also interviewed yeah. the producer, Stephen Simon, <gasps> who will oh, maybe a great guest for your White Shores. Oh, Tells my the story love. of the movie being made. His wife is also in spirit. He's written a book that he communicates with her how her work well, every every said. afterlife story that i've yeah. been sent because you know i have written a lot of angel books and near-death experience stories books and afterlife science books mm. every story i've been sent there are aspects of that in that film it's like you know obviously nothing's completely perfect but it was like this is the best you know you could never something so infinite you could never express that on the screen but it gets so much right do you sense that in, in when, when you see it it abs absolutely beautiful i'd love to be connected with him if if he had the time oh my god yes um but also um dream work as well and and for a film with dreams of course inception <laughs> christopher nolan's inception he's a vivid dreamer again um you know um many of his greatest movies inspired by dreams many movie directors actually have dreams and they go on you can see that in the movie that a dream has inspired it i really hope after listening to this that people will you know have a different uh, um approach to their dream work yeah. tell and, us about, and maybe yeah sorry don't mean to talk tell us no, about no, white, no. white shores as well well, White Shores is a podcast for spiritual beings having a human experience. It references um, my love of Lord of the Rings, you know, um, Tolkien, where Gandalf is telling a frightened hobbit that he thinks he's going to die and is frightened to not be frightened because it's White Shores, a far green country under a swift sunrise. You see it. It's such a famous for White Shores and for Lord of the Rings fans that they will know what White Shores is. It's the undying. It's spirit. It's 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 where the elves and fairies go and humans when they depart this earth. It's a beautiful, mystical place. So I call it that. And I invite scientists on there. It started the first series actually was just scientists like I think you've recently spoken to Helen Awabe, people like that. Uh, Dr. Arnold DeLong, Dean Radin. Um, it was all scientists. But then I began to find that I actually wanted to talk to authentic practitioners so I spoke to psychics and mediums about how they worked and then you know people like yourself amazing authors and and everyone on there I hope I I, I really do feel is utterly authentic and doing this from their hearts not their pockets that's that's what I wanted because I have you know not to mention any names but I have interviewed people sometimes and I just haven't felt that this was this I want my listeners to feel that this person genuinely wants to connect to spirit and it's not about a best-selling book or a media tour, you know, I, and unfortunately in this movement, we, we, that, you know, it is ripe for that kind of thing, sadly. And I, I don't know if you've encountered that. All the time. I must get a hundred requests for people to come on this show every week. How do you and decide? Most of them have nothing to do with life after death. And I think of the grieving mom or dad or anyone that is really struggling, wants to know that their loved one is with them, that they live on, um, is it a match? You know. And sometimes all it takes is to go to someone's website and a medium that charges $300 or $400 an hour or you know, you can just feel. So I say thank you to everyone that I put them in my list. And when the time is right, I review that list. Uh, but some people, yeah. they, they never I get mean, the call. Actually, <laughs> in, in, a, in a psychic, I have guidelines for visiting mediums and psychics. And one of the things is, is the price. If you are being charged an astronomical sum, sum that's a huge red flag. Um, I know mediums and psychics have to earn a living. I actually recently did an interview about this, about how can you tell when it's the real deal. And I go through red flags to look out for and 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 price is, is very significant. It shouldn't cost more. I do think, you know, they do have to charge if that, you know, they have to earn money, but no more than the price of a, a, a good haircut. That's how I, I kind of do that, you know? It may, you know, <laughs> and they should lift you up, not pull you down and, and, and repeat visits. Big no-no. Yeah. What's going on there? You know, if you're, if you're, departed loved one is going to use this medium to get through to you it will happen if it doesn't happen it doesn't happen for a reason one visit isn't enough um 
and so I, I am again passionate about that because I, you know, like you, running a podcast, I get many, many requests, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm very careful um, because I will pull the interview down if I get one complaint from someone who's who's had who's visited a medium or psychic and it's not been the experience it should be, which is healing. You know, a good medium psychic is, is almost a bit like a counselor as well, helping this person enter into a relationship with, in spirit with a departed loved one, right? Um, and also a good medium psychic shouldn't really see someone in the first year of their grief because you're too overwhelmed. You know, grief hits you physically, emotionally, mentally, it bruises you in every way. And that first year, I think it's not right to go to someone with that expectation. It needs to be that needs to be going through that journey first. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, but there are some wonderful, wonderful mediums and psychics out of there. I'm not, not to say that there isn't. And, and also a lot of them, you know, getting tested scientifically too. You know, I work with IONS, the Institute of Noetic Sciences, um, Winbridge, you know, the, you know, it, it's really interesting, isn't it? I don't know, Sandra, how interested you are in that. I started White Shores because I wanted to talk about these scientists who are studying the unseen. I think it's important. It's incredible. When do, you, I, do you feel that? Absolutely. When I started out looking at life after death, I was petrified what my family and friends would think because my picture was always of these new age fanatics wearing the flowing gowns and yes. using the jargon of very spiritual. And I thought people are going to get rid of me as a friend if they know that I'm doing this. But to be like you, that we share credible reasons to believe and they come in all shapes and sizes and stories in different ways and so to let people know their loved ones are very real we continue on in the afterlife what we didn't get to do here we continue on but they're only a breath or a heartbeat away they they can multitask they can be with us through good mediums we see that they are such a part of our lives still and the ultimate message truly is to help people live powerfully now so i think everything that you've shared thus far and you know we can we can definitely come back for some more talk on other things but this empowers people to live their life now and know their their loved ones are so close and that's the real gift is sharing good people uh you know i have to be honest my few well many of my original podcasts I had no idea what I was doing Teresa I was just <laughs> thankful if somebody said yes so <laughs> the audio quality isn't good and quite honestly there's some mediums that I interviewed that I got complaints about probably shouldn't have but I I trust listeners that have been listening the past nine years yes. they've seen how it evolves I always tell people first and foremost trust your own instinct because we know there's a part of us that knows, oh, this is good. Oh, not so much. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and what I think your, your, your listeners and viewers, if they're watching, is the authenticity of, you know, that's, that's what struck me about you is just utterly authentic. And, and sometimes actually the, um, the mistakes you make as a podcaster are actually what people find most endearing. Because I, <laughs> I, when I started, it was my dog kept drinking water. And you could, it was audio only, you had, and, and, and I thought people think, my God, they think my stomach's, you know, going, and, and people actually enjoyed that. And then the doorbell going, and I'm going, post <laughs> I tried to get more professional, I truly have, but I, 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 um, I just want it to be natural, really. Oh, <laughs> yeah, Teresa, in a moment, I'm going to ask you for just some closing thoughts, anything you missed that you want to share, anything, but I, I just want to make a few announcements uh, to everybody. First, oh, we love Teresa. You can go to TeresaChung.com is her website, but what's coming up and going on with us, of course, you can listen to this probably in way out in the future, but our home base will continue to be we don't die dot com you can find all past episodes you, you can download them commercial free if you just want to sit and listen i also have a second podcast called shades of the afterlife that does have commercials that's on iheart radio i'm grateful that they are hosting that so i don't have the rights to that but you can certainly listen to all of them at we don't die.com just go to the radio show 
page and you can see I, I now have it's well over 550 hours of episodes. So, you know, I am definitely committed to this message wholeheartedly. Also, we offer medium classes. We offer what's called a free Sunday gathering. It is a non-denominational Oh, I don't even want to call it a service because that makes it sound religious. It's not. It's empowering. We have music videos. We have uh, a reading. We have an address, always something very powerful for your life now. And usually the last half hour, 40 minutes is a medium demonstration where your loved ones may come through. And even if they don't, you know how close our loved ones are because you get to witness what's happening. We also upcoming uh, have a Sonia Rinaldi, who is a special guest, she is the researcher in Brazil, who for over 30 years started with capturing audios, uh, working with parents free of charge, and their children's voices would appear on these recordings. Over the past five or six years, she has been filming things like static and steam, and lo and behold, when she goes through frame by frame, there are faces and the research she has done with a team of scientists in the afterlife she has an incredible presentation of people who are in the afterlife and they are healthy they are well sometimes there's pictures of children that have passed and they show the very various ages growing up um, people that die when they're older, they, they show pictures that they're living and they're alive and young. So the actual date of that being recorded is August 13th of 2023. And if you listen in the future, you can certainly go back and watch the replay of that. We filmed a movie about her, which is now on Amazon Prime called Rinaldi, Instrumental Transcommunication to the Other Side. So you can find out about all that at wedontdie.com at the bottom of the page. If you wish to enter your name and email address, you can get a free copy PDF style of my book, We Don't Die. And it says it's just the first few chapters. The secret is it is the entire book. Chapter 10, I believe, is most important because it is about how to survive grief. Grief is a killer. It really can. Uh, some people go on a spiritual journey when they grieve, but others, they just die inside when a loved one passes. So it's to understand what happens on our physical, mental, ontologically when someone passes. So you can have that as a gift. So all that stuff, we don't die.com. Pretty darn simple, lots to explore. So Teresa, we're going to go back to you for some closing thoughts, closing inspiration, whatever else you want to share. First of all, sign me up. That sounded awesome. And what an exciting guest coming up. Wow, I, I'm going to follow that. Um, some closing thoughts. Oh, my mind. What came through to me um, just intuitively was that if people were feeling that they haven't had a sign or a dream and feeling lost and abandoned, I've been there. And I want you to know that if you are going through that, your loved one is busy. They have got things to do on the other side. I think, you know, they, they, the, the concept of time in the afterlife, again, from all the research I've done, isn't the same as our linear time. They know that you're just a heartbeat away, as you said so beautifully, Sandra, I'm quoting you here. They know that in spirit. And also they have great faith in you that you don't need propping up. It's actually almost like saying, we, we, we trust you, you can cope, you've got this, I know you've got this. They're believing in you, whether you experience them or not, that's what I'm trying to express. Just, if, if, if they're not coming through, just trust that it's for a reason, but know that they are alive within and all around you, all the time. And you will get through this. You are here for a reason. Your life is beautifully precious. And find your joy because when you're joyful, they feel it. They don't want to feel your pain. You know, they know you have to go through it. They know you have to go through it, but they, they, want, they want you to feel joy. They want you to have this wonderful earthly experience. And it is a wonderful experience life before we go to the afterlife 
It is a wonderful, we're here for a reason because there are things we can learn in the earthly state we can't necessarily do over there. So just love it, celebrate every moment. And final thought is, you know, daydreaming about departed loved ones is not a negative thing. People may say, well, you've got to move on. No, daydreaming about them is keeping their memory alive because people say you die twice, don't they? The first time when someone dies and the second time when people don't remember them always remembered your people you've loved and lost always carry them with you don't let them die twice oh Teresa thank you so much for being our guest today thank you <laughs> oh and for our listener or our viewer thank you so much for taking your precious time and being with us a reminder you can go to teresachung.com and we don't die.com but in closing my name is Sandra Champlain and always gives me so much happiness to be your host on We Don't Die Radio. I'm not just your host, I'm a listener, right? I have a life and I love this stuff. Remember, <laughs> you are a soul having a human experience. There's so much more to you than meets the eye. There really is. And what Teresa said today, tap into that inner being, helping us with our dreams. Start journaling them, start engaging with them re-listen to this episode because there's so much value in it and just keep track of what happens i'm personally very excited i've never had a conversation quite like this so i'm really interested in not only doing these May things I say one more thing. yeah of course you can. one more thing so sorry i, I, I well, it such, it on. No, just one more thing that just thinking about dreams and listening to this episode may well trigger dream recall the following morning that's how it works. What you pay attention to in the day often shows up in the dreams. So I really hope it triggers dreams and whatever they are, don't panic about them, write them down and then just, just start brainstorming them. I really hope that it, it, this episode triggers dream recall. It's beautiful. It, yeah, it is. It will. It's great. So ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, boys and girls, who's ever listening past, present and future, I'm Sandra Champlain from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for listening or for watching. And we'll see you again soon. Thank you, Teresa. Good. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>